Hello, my name is Amanda Hill of the Archives Association of Ontario. In this short video, I will be covering some of the experiences and lessons learned during a recent move of the Community Archives of Belleville and Hastings County, in the hope that it might be helpful for other people facing a similar move. This photo was taken on the day of the move, as the trucks were being loaded up with archives from inside the former Thurlow Township Hall, home to the Hastings County Historical Society from 1998, and to the Community Archives from 2010. This move was the culmination of a 12-year project to find a new home for the archives kept here, a building which was eminently unsuitable for the storage of unique archival materials, and was also problematic in terms of public access, it's a long way from the nearest public transit and is only accessible using stairs. Work had started on the construction of a new $1.1 million archives facility inside the Belleville Public Library in May 2015, and the Community Archives took over ownership of the space at the beginning of March 2016. Planning for the actual move began in August 2015. The first priority was to have a complete inventory of the archival materials in the existing building, as there had not been such an inventory before. Priority two was to ensure that the archives could be moved without causing them any damage. The third priority was to allocate every item to a shelf in the new building, and the last step was to label absolutely everything with its new location. Now let's look at those four steps in a bit more detail. The inventory project took about four months from beginning to end, with many interruptions for other activities, of course. There were six rooms in the old building used for storing archives, so the inventory was done originally room by room, shelf by shelf. The shelves were already numbered before the project started. This screenshot shows the inventory as it stood in January 2016, when it was largely complete and had reached 2,611 items. Here it has been sorted by the name of the font or collection. We recorded the existing location, the title, any subtitles, the type of container and its width, length and height in centimetres. This is another spreadsheet. This one records the identifier and dimensions of every shelf that would be in the new building. We had two vaults fitted with space saver mobile shelving and one vault which would be filled with fixed shelving taken from the old site. As you might notice from this, not all the space saver shelving was the same width. As well as gaining intellectual control of the collection, we also had physical concerns about moving everything. About 1,000 of the items in the inventory were bound volumes of newspaper. And as you can see from these images, many of them were not going to travel well in their current state. We invested in 200 large boxes for the most fragile modern newspapers, those in the shelves on the right of this slide, and we wrapped the ones in the shelves on the left, technically they're actually doors, not shelves, in acid-free paper. These photos were taken in December 2015. We also wrapped the most delicate volumes of the City of Belleville's records. Here are the newspapers once the boxing project had been completed by the end of January, together with the wrapped City of Belleville minute books and bylaws and the newspapers on their doors. Once the inventory was complete, the next priority was to assign locations to all 2,611 items in the new building. This involved working with the original inventory file and the shelf ID list and adding a new location field to the inventory. Collections had become separated in the old building due to space constraints, so the opportunity was taken to reunite materials, as you can see from this screenshot here. These Wanamaker family items had been kept in three different rooms in the old building, but were placed next to each other in the new location. It took about two months to assign locations to every item in the inventory. By mid-February, a mover had been selected and we met several times to talk about logistics for the move. They wanted a floor plan and, and colour coding for the materials as to where they would end up. 
Using Word's Mail Merge feature, we were able to create labels from the inventory spreadsheet and stick them to all the items except the 1,000 volumes of Belleville Intelligence and newspapers. The newspapers were going to be arranged by date in the new location, so instead of labelling all the papers, we labelled the shelves with the dates that they would hold. As well as the label with the shelf number, we added coloured dots for each vault. Yellow for vault A, blue for vault B and red for vault C. Here is a typical bay of shelving in the old building once this process was complete. The shelving itself is labelled with its new number and a date for the newspapers it would hold in the new building. It also carries a red dot to show that it was heading for Vault C. You can see that we marked the height of the shelves with masking tape so that movers would know where to put the shelves back after they'd been dismantled. The boxes were heading to vaults A and B in the new building, and the yellow and blue dots made it easy to sort the boxes once they arrived at the other end. It took two days to move everything out of the old building. The shelving that was going to be moved was emptied first, with the contents packed into blue wooden computer carts, or, in the case of records boxes, piled onto four-wheeled dollies. Dismantling the shelving and rebuilding it at the other end was one of the most time-consuming parts of the move, and it took two full days. Moving the map chests was also challenging, but that went fairly well. It's very hard work moving an entire archive, but with a lot of planning and a great team of volunteers and movers, it's really wonderful to find yourself in a new accessible location with room for expansion. This is one of a series of videos funded by the Government of Ontario to provide online training opportunities for archivists and archives users in Ontario. Thanks for listening.